You're listening to the Staging Sips Podcast with Lori Fisher. This podcast is dedicated to helping real estate staging CEOs build healthy businesses that grow, flow, and thrive. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so happy that you're here. I'm so happy to be here. And I want to say, oh my goodness, we have so many new people who are listening. So for those of you who are new or newish to the podcast, welcome. Welcome to our SIPS family over here. Thrilled to have you. And I also would like to send out a shout out and a thank you to someone who left a really nice review and kind words for me. I never understood why podcasters would read their testimonials and then say thank you. But I realized there's no way to be able to respond to somebody who has taken the time to actually give you kind words. There's no way on the platforms to be able to do that. So this is the best place to do it. So I would like to thank Estella from Stell House. I so appreciate that you took the time to leave not only a five-star review, but you called it superb information. And then you said, listen to one episode and I was hooked. Very informative for fine tuning the staging business. Thank you. Well, thank you, Estella. I so appreciate it. I'm so happy that you listen into the podcast. And for those of you who have been listening, if you're loving the Staging Sips podcast and gathering little nuggets of wisdom, I'd love for you to rate and review the show. It really helps other staging business owners find us. And I really want to be able to help as many staging business owners as possible. So let's all be a rising tide that you know lifts all the boats. And one way we can do that is by you letting me know um, how you feel about the podcast. And so anyway, that's my little uh, thing for that. So let's help other staging business owners find us. All right. So let's dive in. Today, I am actually talking about belief plans, which we touched on a little bit over in our last episode, episode 11 in relationship to the Get Acquainted Call. But I'm going to dig into this just a little bit further. And the reason for it is that with the new year coming, I want us to continue to do some mindset work in preparation because what I learned in many years in business was that in quarter four, I would get really excited and I would start doing my business planning and I would create, you know, my goals and start setting my action plans to reach my goals. And I was super excited and, you know, super pumped about all of it and documenting it all. And then I would hit the first workday in January and I was assuming that I was going to be like this just machine, this person just going out and being like a total goal getter. And what I found was that the day was very anticlimactic. It was just like any other day. And I sort of ended up second guessing everything I had done in quarter four to prepare for the beginning of the new year. And I wasn't sure why I was doing that until I started working with my current business coach, Toby Fairley. And that's when belief plans were first brought into my life. So I want you to be prepared for your first workday back in January, or just in general, if you're listening to this any other time of the year, I want you to be prepared for what your brain is going to do as you go to tackle goals at any point in your um, business and what your brain is going to do and how we can help uh, your brain work even better. So just to give you a little background in my life, I believe my, my original belief plans were given to me from my mother. My mother had two mantras for my sister and me, and that those were no problem is a problem. And when the, the going gets tough, the tough get going. And honestly, as an adult, these were the best gifts I could have received because we were taught these things early and we were reminded of them often, you know, as you grow up, there's lots of challenges and lots of things that don't go your way. And my mother was always reminding us of these two mantras. And what it did was it was, they were just practiced beliefs. And literally to this day, my sister and I still say these things out loud to each other, to ourselves. We've taught our children how to use these things when when they encounter challenges in their lives. And so they were beliefs that we practiced over and over again. And what that did was it put us in in a state of inevitability for the result that we want, no matter what the situation, right? So I'm telling you this simply because for you and yourself, creating and practice beliefs like this will help you conjure them more easily and then conjure them more easily when you're putting your plans, your action plans into place, right? For your business. So 
In podcast episode one, we talked about how to take way, way better action. And then in episode 10, we talked about preparing your brain as well. And we, we talked about preparing your brain in the context of that results triad, the knowledge, beliefs, and actions that align to get you your results. And most people want to spend their time in knowledge and action, right? I am the same. I love creating to-do lists. I love check, checking the boxes. And my team knows in Asana where our project management is, I love when I check the the right number of to-dos off my list and the rainbow and the narwhal fly across the screen. It's very thrilling to me. I love all the dopamine rush that goes along with it, right? But as we talked about in the episode about preparing your brain in episode 10, just having the action list isn't enough because there is delay between the actions that you take for most things and the result that you get. And in that delay, your brain likes to think that things aren't working. So while you're waiting for the proof of concept for those actions, right? Like you're taking the action steps that you think are going to lead to result. You're not seeing the result and your brain goes up. We're not seeing the result. We need to go, you know, do additional work. So it it might even create like really good distractions from doing what you actually need to do. So like if you're, you want to onboard more new clients and you are, you said for the action that you'd reach out for coffee dates, you'd reach out, um, you'd send out an email once a week and maybe you're networking and you're not booking coffee dates, you're not booking get acquainted calls, you don't have any inquiries from new clients. What your brain is gonna tell you is that you probably need to go work on your website or you. it's probably because you don't have a portfolio set up and maybe you need to go set up a portfolio or maybe you don't have like, enough of an enticing free thing to give away to get their email address so you can stay in touch with them, right? So your brain is going to send you off doing those kinds of things, right? Um, And it's that whole concept of going from like pre-possibility that we talked about in episode 10, where you're really excited about things to then your brain moves through impossibility. It has a hard time seeing how you're going to be able to accomplish the goal. And then especially when you don't ever get, you don't seem to be getting the proof that it's working, you're never going to get to possibility and inevitably, inevitability. I don't know why I have such a hard time saying that word, by the way, but I do. (laughs) Inevitability. So the belief plan is just one more tool that you can lean into when you're creating your action plans, right? So I learned this concept, like I said, from Toby Fairley, who um, I believe she got that from her business coach, Brooke Castillo. And I've also heard it from Stacey Bayman, who I also have studied with. Um, it's really, belief plans are just simply intentionally creating thoughts ahead of time that we're going to practice and then lean on to tell our primitive brains when it wants to go into survival, like AKA the Netflix cozy pants mode, right? Um, and creating the belief plans, as I mentioned before, when I was talking about my mom's belief, kind of belief plans that she gave us, that it really helps you focus better on what really matters that will fuel you growing your self-concept to be a fully booked and in-demand staging business owner. Um, so I think that's kind of the the background on the belief plan. And I want you to understand this, that you can believe whatever you choose to believe. Literally, you can believe anything. You can believe that your actions aren't working. You can believe just as easily without proof that you're getting new clients, that your actions are working. But it's all about the belief. And I loved years ago, I listened to a podcast with a sports psychologist who works with some really high profile athletes. And he said, there's a reason why Michael Jordan wants the ball at the end of every game. And that is because he has the belief that he will score the needed points at the, you know, beat the buzzer, score whatever they need in order to win the game. He has created and practiced that belief. And because he has that belief, he has aligned all of his actions, his practice, his preparation, all of it to, to be the person who is you know, got ice in his veins in order to sink the ball at the very last minute. He could very easily have chosen a different thought. Don't throw the ball to me. I'm going to choke every time. I get too nervous. I get too stressed. I get too shaky. All the things. He could very easily have created created that belief as well, but he didn't. His belief plan was that he was going to win the game at the buzzer every time, give him the ball. So 
you get to choose what you think. So if this is true, what we want to be doing is creating the thoughts that keep us creating clients and creating an amazing workplace for ourselves and our teams. But sometimes what we do is we create, we have beliefs that creating content is more important than creating clients. And and I guess that probably needs some clarification because I'm not saying that creating content isn't good. In, in fact, I love creating content. So I'm not saying that it's good or bad um, or that creating a website or social media posts aren't important. You know, they certainly are. But what I'm saying is that we can use these things as a distraction from going out and doing the things that we actually need to grow our businesses, which is meeting people, telling them we're a stager and staying in touch with them because we believe doing those other things are what brings us clients and makes us money. But I'm here to tell you that I had none of those for a long time when I started my business. I was hired before I had a before and afters, before I had a website, before I had any social media posts without exactly knowing how to walk through a house during a styling evaluation, without any systems, without knowing how to take payment besides check or cash. Like there was so much I did not have in place. I was hired by friends who told me they were moving and I offered to help. I was hired from going to my BNI meetings at 7 a.m. every Tuesday morning and landing clients from those referrals that those people gave me. Nobody ever questioned at all if I had a portfolio, if I had worked with anybody else or any of that. Um, and I knew at the time I had an amazing business coach in Deborah Gould who I could lean on with any questions that I had as I went along the way, but I did not have the money for a website. I didn't really know how at all about social media. And in fact, Instagram was so new. I didn't really understand how you use that. So I am actual proof that you can grow a business that way. And in fact, this podcast, every week we have numbers of people. It's growing every single week, the number of downloads that we have. And the one piece that we don't have up and running yet is our promotion, right? We're not really posting that much about uh, the podcast on social media at all. Um, we're still growing that and working out what that system looks like for us. So the fact that we are growing the podcast without all of that it just shows you that you don't really need those things. What you need is you need aligned action. So along with your to-do list and uh, you know all the things you need to do to, to get what you want, you want to add in and layer in a belief plan so that you take kind of, you create a to-do list for your brain, right? Um, so what if you made a list of all the things you'd need to believe to make money today? Like today, not like six months from now, what would those beliefs be, right? Because if you were going to, let's say, go to a networking event or reach out to somebody to schedule a coffee date, what do you need to believe in order to do those things, carry through with them rather than stop yourself? You know, you want to be thinking like, it's possible to onboard a new client today. I think that's a really great place to start, right? It is possible. You never know anyone's out there, right? At any given moment, you don't know. I think another really good one to think about is that there is a line of people. We talked about it, the thousand ready clients um, in episode 11. That's a great one. In addition, you could, if you're really visual, like so many of us are, that idea that there are people lined up. Imagine you have a brick and mortar store. There are people lined up outside of your store right now. And they just need to know how to get in. They need, you know, they need you to open the doors. They need you to turn on the open sign. They need you to direct them to the fact that the entrance is actually on the side of the building. They may not know that. You may be like a speakeasy right now. Like nobody knows you're there and, and you need to help spread the word of mouth, right? So if you're really visual, that is a great place to start. That there are people waiting. They just need you to be there and to show up. What if you had this thought that staying in touch is an act of service for my future clients? I, I referenced um, in a, another episode about a realtor we had been in touch with for seven years on a weekly basis with my blogs and emails and new listing alerts that we do. And it's actually, we, we realized it was nine years, not seven years. So it's been a, a much longer time. Some, some people aren't ready to buy right away, but they're going to be ready soon and someday. And they just need you to be, you know, if, if 
they're not ready to buy yet, but they're in line sort of waiting and thinking and looking in the window of your store. They might need you to just come out and say, Hey, hi, every few minutes say, let we're open. If you're, you know, if you want to come in, um, that, that might be a great thought for you to have. There's a client right now that needs us and staying in touch with them is, is of service. People love hiring and working with stagers. Yes, because we're the bomb. We're amazing, right? We change lives. All of these are really helpful, intentional thoughts for you. If you're growing your business and you need to expand your team, some other thoughts that may come up for you is that hiring is not fun. It's long. It's cumbersome. You don't want to have to do it. It could cost you more money. Maybe you need to create thoughts around that. Expanding my team to serve more clients is the best thing for our business. That's a really good one. Um, Delegating and taking things off of my plate will make the business so much better for everyone, including myself. Another great thought. Letting go of that team member that isn't really working out is the best decision for my business. That's another great one. Um, Finding the most perfect, amazing team member is totally doable and will be so much fun. This is one that I have now. I did not, I had some unintentional thoughts around hiring for a long time. Now I know when we're ready to hire, it's going to be so great because I love our process. It's totally dialed in and we get the most amazing um, team members as a result of this new hiring process that we implemented a few years ago. Um, Clients value what we do and they'll easily pay more for how we help. This is a big one, especially as for many of us, I I know I'm getting all of the emails right now with people telling me that they're going to um, have to raise their rates for the work they do for us. And we're going to be raising our rates as a result. We need to anyway. Um, But I like to think of, you know, I always say my hairdresser every year, I, you know, there's a price increase. She doesn't make any big deal about it. She doesn't send out an email. She doesn't apologize for it. She doesn't explain why. It's just, I go get my hair done. It's a different price. And then I book my next appointment. It can be that easy. Protecting our company revenue is one of my most important jobs, right? So when you're thinking about marketing and being out there, if you, you know, obviously when I come from a place of service, there are all these clients waiting to hear from me. There's someone in my zip code right now. And it's actually my job to keep the lights on in my, my store. It's my job to go out and make sure I'm in front of people so that they know that they can come in and they know how to do it, right? And make it easy. Super, super good. So how do we begin to create really like on a consistent basis, the practice of these belief plans? Well, it's really simple. A few years ago, I had started a journaling practice and I think it's a really powerful thing to do and it doesn't take a lot of time. I'm not one who likes to write out all my thoughts and feelings. So I have a simple, super easy process. I write down three things that I'm grateful for because getting our brains into um, gratitude just helps us be more creative in general and just ups our vibe. And we're coming from a much more higher vibration um, energetically when we are in gratitude. And then it's three things that I want to accomplish in my business. And then three thoughts I need to practice in order to accomplish those things. And so the first one, what I'm grateful for, I change those up every day, but the three things I want to accomplish and the three thoughts I want to practice, they are in alignment together. And I keep those the same for days, you know, days, months on end, because the more I practice them, the more I will ingrain them, the more easily I will be able to lean on them and get myself into inevitability. So I'm going to encourage you and offer that to you as well as a really powerful tool that you can use. Gratitude, three things you're grateful for, three things you want to accomplish and three, um, beliefs you need to practice in order to accomplish those things. And I will tell you what, along the way, you're going to notice that things are going to start getting easier for you to do. You'll be in um, what Stacey Bayman calls higher value cycles of taking action when you are prepared with your beliefs. And I know this is going to be a part of how I'm going to spend my first day back in the new year. And of course, every day as we move through the new year. So I hope this is helpful. I know it's not strategy right now, but obviously we have a lot of podcasts that we'll be devoting to that. But I feel like this mindset work is really important to dabble in along the way in addition to the strategy. So anyway, that's what I've got for you this week. I hope you have an amazingly wicked good week coming up and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. 
Thank you so much for listening to the Staging Sips podcast. If you love what you've learned here today and you want to learn more about how to market and grow your staging business more strategically, I would love to see you join us inside of the Rethink You Mentorship Program. If you want more details and get on our waiting list, you can go to rethinkhomeinteriors.com forward slash waitlist. Looking forward to seeing you in the classroom.